Zoot, zap, pow, crinkle. It's like magic. You feel yourself disappear. Your atoms fading out of existence. I did it, Kim. I teleported. And I guess welcome to the food truck. My name is Ruka. Today we are doing episode 14 of Disco Elysium. Uh, before we do get started, I have a confession to make. So I was making this recording for the Let's Play, right? And before I knew it, six hours of footage was lost during the recording process. So what does that mean for the rest of the playthrough? It means that probably any reactions to events that happen in the game are going to be a little bit more muted than usual because I kind of already know what to expect. I spoiled myself, guys. I spoiled myself. And there might be a little bit less one, a little bit uh, more direct paths than what you would expect from a completely blind playthrough. But that's because of the lost footage. I don't know what else to tell you about that. It was a unfortunate accident on my part. So what now? Well, I'm going to still try to do my best for the playthrough. Uh, but the format of these final few episodes may be a little bit different. We'll see, though. We'll see. Uh, however, as far as checks I know that are going to come, they will. I will prepare for them adequately as much as I can. And just be aware that that is actually happening. Okay, with that out of the way. So last time on Disco Elysium, I forgot what we did. <laughs> what did I do? I think I... Oh, yeah, that's right. I think I tried to go to the church and check out what went over there try to help the the programmer as well as uh the punk rockers to come to an agreement that didn't, never happened so after that i was at a loss of what to do so basically i just went back to the whirling and sang my hearts out i would often go there to the tiny church there and what a beautiful song that was. And now that we're done with the whirling, what am I supposed to do now? We'll see. We'll see. All right, let's get started. So where are we now? I'm going to go ahead and preemptively. No, let's not do. Let's not preemptively do anything about that. Um, I think what I need to do, though, is get rid of Kim, send him back so I can talk to Joyce about the pail. I haven't got any information about the pail yet, um, but I'm really, really curious about it. So let's go back to our shack. Travel to the shacks. And get rid of Kim. It's getting cold. This late in the night. Time to call it a day. Good night, Kim. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Gotcha. All right. Now that we got rid of Kim, let's go talk to Joyce. Joyce, where are you? There you are. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Uh, questions about reality. More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Now that we're alone, what is the pail? Are you sure you're sure? Your colleague seemed adamant. Yes, what is the pail? Okay. The pail is the most dominant geological feature of the world, detective. The separative tissue between the Islas, it is the inter mass. Wait, what's an Isla? Isla is a Mycenaean word for a continent of matter, enveloped on all sides by the pale. Also, isolation, or landmass. We used uh... to believe there was only one. In the last four centuries, we have discovered seven. Seven Islas, seven... Continental landmasses? Is that what, they're, what you're talking about? Windy, Seol, Samara, Ilmara, Grad, 
Cutler and this Insulinde. And Insulinde is... An oceanic isola. It comprises mostly of water. Moindi is the largest. Cutler, the coldest. Insulinde, the bluest. What can I say? Each is perishing and dear. Okay, what's the pale like? Achromatic, odorless, featureless. The pale is the enemy of matter and life. It is not like any other or anything in the world. It is the transition state of being into nothingness. Huh. The negation of being. Wait, is that like the same thing in the, the church where the sound just kind of disappeared? The negation of... That's right. The negation of being. She tightens her hood around her neck. It's cold outside. Is it... here? No, detective. We're safe. It begins there, 6,000 kilometers to the north, and even more to the south, east, and west. You are in the middle of the Isola. And point north. How about there? An uproar of matter, darling. Rising into the pale. Rolling. Evaporating, even. A great vision. The area of transition between the world and the pale is called Porch Collapse. Porch Collapse is... Wait, hold on. Wait, I mean, she said it's like 6,000 kilometers, but... This stuff over here on the outside of the map... Is that the pale or just a representation of the pale? I mean... If it if that's what the pale looks like, that's kind of scoop that's kind of spooky, isn't it? It's weird. The structure of this world is really weird. So, from what I'm understanding so far, it's like this is nothing like our world. It's very different. Imagine a gray coronal mist, cold vapor marked by spores of an opportunistic microorganism. A mold that's adapted to grow at the edge of the unrest. It's... Uh, the most disco thing you will ever see. I don't think that's very disco. Uh, she closes her eyes and breathes out heavily. You hear your pulse rise. The air feels caustic and cold suddenly. What are its physical qualities? It's difficult to describe, or even measure. Something whose fundamental property is the suspension of properties. Physical, epistemological, linguistic. Epistemological? What is that word? The further into pale you travel, the steeper the degree of suspension. Right down to the mathematical. Numbers stop working. No one has yet passed the number barrier. It may be impossible. There's a slippery article in there. It kind of, the pill kind of sounds like, um, I don't know, some kind of quantum science where it's like, I think there's this thing in quantum mechanics where it's like, when you get down to like the very smallest parts of matter or either very cold or very hot, it doesn't behave like what you expect it to. And that's kind of what it sounds like, except... It's its own thing. Is it the pale or pale? Pale when it's particular. This territory of pale. The pale when it's pale in its entirety. Once you've seen it, language bolts at the difference. Uh, if we're surrounded by pale, how do you get from Isola to Isola? Oh, it is so difficult for us. Her lungs deflate. Her words sound like a sigh. A squall of birds. Hardware operating in the harbor. Firm. Self-evident. It is possible to force dimensions on the pale. In modern times, we can even compress its latitude, bouncing radio waves from one end to the other, shortening the path. But it is still hard for humans to navigate the pale without getting lost or having our minds damaged. The pill can damage the mind? Extensively. How? Some say 
the damage stems from extreme sensory deprivation. Others argue that Pale somehow consists of past information that's degrading, that it's rarefied past, not rarefied matter. The, the rarefied past? They call it the blend over of the self. The Pale does not only suspend the laws of physics, but also the laws of psychology. Maybe history, even. The human mind becomes over-radiated by past. Who says and who argues? Who says and who argues? Wait. Over-radiated by past? Is that kind of like what happened to that, um... The old lorry driver? That lady lorry driver? Um, that... Seems like she's always lost in thought or something? Is that what it is? It's probably what it is, right? Who says and who argues? The logical positivists say. The dialectical materialists argue. What does this over-radiation feel like? It feels terrible. Absolutely terrible. International standards strictly limit civilian travelers to six days of pale exposure per year. It's more for her. Way more. You're not a civilian passenger. No, Lieutenant Dubois. I'm entrepreneurial business class. I'm cleared and trained for 22 days of pale transit annually. Someone else you've met may have been exposed as well. The strange gray-haired woman in her lorry. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was talking about. Do lorry drivers pass the pale? Yes. Carried in the hulls of airships. It's a horrific job. Automation will abolish it soon. Well, good. Sounds, sounds like a dangerous job. You should ask the pal driver about this. See what she says. Are you over-radiated? Up to my gills, officer. I see. An acidic smile on her lips. It's getting worse every year. What is entroponetic? Entroponetics is the scientific study of the pale, or a recent iteration of it by way of grad. The study of the pale reaches back 6,000 years. The Periconarsians called it the Western Plain. They had not traveled the entire circumference of the Periconarsian Super Isola. It was not merely in the West, it was everywhere, even then, surrounding them. Did they cross it, the Western Plain? There are signs of pre-modern crossings. Successful navigation of the Pale relies not just on technical know-how, but intensive psychological preparation. Some of these tactics have been known for thousands of years. What has entrepreneurs changed then? Nothing. We remain powerless before the Pale. The only real advance in Pale Transit is the speed with which an aerostatic craft can pierce it. Less exposure leads to less effects later. Right. Uh, aerostatic craft? Hybrid airships, detective. Conventional rotors or jet engines no longer add velocity after the point of reference for motion is suspended. Once you've crossed from near pale to far pale. In essence, we throw them in and they come out the other end. If we throw them precisely. If we do not. Then they don't. Okay. Gone. Like a skipping stone beneath the surface. Sucks for those people, I guess, huh? How much pale is there compared to the world? The pale outweighs reality two to one. There is more pale than there is matter. And the ratio is slipping. Slipping how? To our detriment or...? What do you think, detective? It's shrinking. There is more and more of the world. It's growing. There is more and more of the pale. It's growing from the sound of it. Precisely. One of the few measurable effects of the pale is that it is expanding at an unknown rate. An intuitive conclusion of that development is that one day the pale will cover everything. But this sort of talk is mostly left to extremists. It's not extreme at all. It's going to happen. Cover everything that can't be. Where will we go? Stay silent. <sighs> I mean, if it's inevitable, it's going to happen. It's not extreme at all. Most people, and indeed most private and government sector organizations, entire civilizations and religions even, 
find handy ways to ignore or downplay that knowledge. I suggest you do the same. Go. It doesn't look like you're doing the same. The suggestion was meant in earnest, detective. Live life. I think I know what you're getting at. It's kind of like, just because you know the universe is going to end eventually, why worry about it now, especially if um, it's not going to happen in your lifetime? That kind of thing. Okay, let's return to rea reality then. Yes, sweet reality. But before we do, tell me, detective, is this the first time you're hearing this? Do you really not remember anything? Nothing. Just alcohol fumes and blackout. I sometimes sense vague shadows of the past and it's not good. I'm getting a sense of who I am, but no, I didn't know this. Beyond curious. Tell me, what do you think of the pale? It's terrifying. You were right, it's disco. It will end all life. That we continue to persist at all is a testament to our faith in one another. Its advance can only be stopped with immediate total ruthless communism. I, I, I don't think so. A powerful anti-communist force. Perhaps all too powerful, but still, they have it coming. <laughs> what? Why is all this political down here? I'm worried, I have to say, it doesn't sound very liberal to me. I don't know how you've all survived with it. It's a huge accomplishment. Who am I to think anything of it? Uh, who am I to think anything of it? Mm -hmm. Her eyes tense. Crow's feet radiate from them. She observes you. Your bloodshot eyes and swollen face. Your ailing constitution. Sweaty forehead. The beads there and your heavy breathing. You really didn't know. This does not spell good for the investigation, detective. If you don't know even this, then... Wait, why would I need to know about the Pale Film investigation unless it's, like, directly related? I'll handle it. It's under control. This investigation will be my masterpiece. The one they remember me by, I promise. Yes, I, uh, I'm in serious trouble here. It'll be a fucking disaster. I know it. All those people will die. Uh, it'll be my masterpiece. The one they remember me by. I hope so. I truly do. If I may suggest... Hold on to your colleague, Kitsuragi. I ran a check on him and he is very competent. Yes, he is. In the meanwhile, you have me. I will assist you in any way I can, even if we have to do it one basic term at a time. All right. Um, I guess that's it for now. Glad Thank you. Been of assistance. All right. Uh, how many points we got? A lot of points. Oh. Let's see. Okay, I guess let's go ahead and talk to the Pale Rider. Well, what's the fastest way to get there? I think we would fast travel and then drop by uh, to that place. Let's see, map. Travel. Okay, Pale Rider, I need to talk to you. See what, see if what you experience has, can be useful for anything. Are you even up? Oh, she's up. There we go. Lowman, you caught me at an opportune moment. This awful weather keeps me awake. You can entertain me with your questions. Um, uh, before I came, you seemed away. What do you mean? You were in a dream, inactive, tuned off. Blacked out. Should you be driving uh, a lorry like that? Um, uh, you were in a dream. Yes, what about it? Uh, the routes you drive are unusual, aren't they? Some of them. Some of them are like home to me now. I would say the routes I drive are usual to me. She nods. What routes? The Monosov's Land, Udajnaya Zemlya, the Western Plain. Oh. The Western Plain, that's, uh, that's one of those, what do you call this, the, the pale areas, right? She nods and closes her eyes again, letting her mind submerge. A terrible cold comes over her, rattling her teeth as she stares inward. The Transcadalia Magistral, you for one A, are the Stradas do Mirador, all the good ones, the deep trenches, where the bluebirds fly, 
She opens her eyes again and shudders. I'm something of an expert in blacking out. You should take better care of yourself. Cool, right until you're dust, sister. I'm an expert in blacking out. You should take care of yourself. You're right, Loman. I'm the one who should take my health more seriously. Thank you for looking out for me. She looks you over and scoffs. Right, I guess I'm still... <laughs> I guess if, if my portrait is accurate, I'm still looking bad, huh? A correct appraisal. You're quite shabby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that all you woke me up to say? I think I know what's going on with you. And what is that? She, uh, she sticks a filterless cigarette into a cigarette holder and reaches for the light. You're a pale driver. You transport goods through the pale. Oh, my Deus. The lawman solved the case. She lights the cigarette. A white cloud of smoke disappears into her mouth. And here I was, thinking you were an idiot. So, are you? An idiot, I mean? She breathes out and the air tastes sweet. Republica. A filterless cigarette from Misk. Republica smelled air. That's not very healthy. Uh, I blacked out after a night of heavy drinking and lost all memory of the world. I blacked out from sheer heartbreak and lost all memory of the world. I'm not an idiot. I'm a detective with RCN. Don't say I'm an idiot. Uh, I'm pretty sure we had drank too much and lost all memory of the world. <laughs> like Gabriel Buenguerro in Pergunte Apoeira. You're the opposite of me, then. I remember everything. Even things I never knew. She nods and smiles, unkindly. Things you never knew? The smell of liquor on Gabriel's lips after the shoot. In the motor park. The roses on the day of Franco Negro's coronation. And the grand stairs of Ryle. The smoke from the fouling piece when Dolores' day was shot. Mm. The look on her face like an orgasm. The wound in her chest. My hand in my father's hand. Except I never had a father. And I never shot her innocence Dolores Day. She closes her eyes, her eyelids trembling. Uh, over radiation? Isn't that dangerous? Over radiation? Heroic doses, Harifia. Heroic. Isn't that dangerous? Thought insertion? Dithering? The Grad Catala Magistral? It's more than dangerous. It's sad. But at first I had to make a living. Now... Now what? When you've seen it all go away like that. Rolling off like the sea. And then come back to this. Uh, she gestures at the square. The horse broken monument. The clanging of machines in the distance. What are we doing here? For thousands of years, Gabriel. It doesn't have to be like this. We can just give up. We can just become a vapor. What does it look like, the pale? Like looking into the ocean at night, in the dark. And? You cannot see it, but you know it's there. And it's big, bigger than anything. Bigger than all the other things combined. Sounds like space. What does it feel like? Nothing. Until it starts. When you are deep enough. Then, for me, it's like autumn. Dark, gray, and orange. The orange of street lights and the color of streets in the electric light. It smells like autumn too. It smells terrible. Nostalgia. Cooped up in the cabin, shaking. Terrible nostalgia. For yourself. For humans. It's too much to bear. She loves it. She's gone crazy. How do you pass through it? In the belly of an airship behind the cell windows. So you don't look straight into it. It's not advised to look into it. Not on the slurry then? No, the same one, a roller. They all are nowadays. A special wheels for connecting to the floor of the hold. She points to the machines clumped up like toys. The wheels all small and round. Multi-axle trailers. One last thing. You said we can just become vapor? Yes. No elaboration. I would rather have what I have than what you have. I would rather have what you have than what I have. 
I feel I already have what you have in some way. I think I would still rather have what I have than what you have. They say there is a point, one that I have not crossed. In the pearl, super deep. If you stray too far, of course, on the U for one A, or in Lomonosov's land, where every step you take is one step further from home, no matter the direction. This is like crossing the event horizon on a, on a black hole. You just never come back. You're, you're done. It's a point you cannot come back from. Your mind becomes so radiant with the past, there is a flip. Instead of writing, it erases memory, nearing some kind of indescribable finale. She shakes her head. Yeah, that sounds scary. Maybe you've been down the motorway south? She looks at her cigarette. It's almost out. She has swallowed it hungrily, then at you. The motorway south? It's a story as lone horse men tell. Lone horse men, Carife, not pearl drivers. Way beyond the established pearl that's lit by radio frequencies. Where it goes silent. Wait, just like the... Just like the church? And dark. And the process begins. Erasure, kilometer by kilometer. In any direction. The motorway south is a road you cannot come back from. What is at the end of the motorway south? No one knows what's at the end. I've only glimpsed the beginning. She takes a cigarette out of her cigarette holder and extinguishes it. I've only felt it in the distance, when I was a child. A child growing on the leg. She goes silent, her eyes close and her hands shake. Ma'am? <sighs> Hosiana. A sigh escapes her lips, then silence as she stares within herself. There is nothing more to do now. She's far away. I see. She is receding in the clutches of some indescribable scattered emotion. A child. Right. Uh, also, I probably should get rid of this Wompy Dump Center. I already made back the the points that um, that I was going to that I used on this, and I really don't like it to begin with because that minus two suggestion is gonna hurt us later for sure. So let's get rid of that. Motorway South. What is this? Minus one visual calculus. Eight hours. At the edge of the map, the landmass begins to disintegrate into pure trigonometry. The ocean melts, becoming a tangle of sines and cosines. The mountain range turns into a sharp angled azimuth. Its green rain shadow dithers, like music turning into a waveform, and then vanishes. This is the end, a half remembered textbook from your childhood. The porch collapsing on the edge of the isla. A transition from reality to pale. A single vector shoots out, like a rocket. It's the motorway south, splintering off from the known pale. To where? Where does it go? I guess let's go ahead and internalize this one. Sounds interesting. Minus one visual calculus. Um, I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. But the suggestion, we can't have anything at zero, basically. Speaking of which, this uh, physical this physical instrumentation with the wasteland, we probably should stop that. At least, I'm, at least until I know I'm going to be in the clear. Mm, yeah, let's remove that for now. Thought stopped, and... That's just kind of like, okay, thought stopped. Let's see, how are we doing? I think we're fine for now. Empathy and land empire. Okay, I think we're done here for today. Let's go ahead and get some sleep. Can I fast travel from here? Yes, I can. All right. Time to sleep. It's getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. Enter the shack. Let's see. 
go to bed. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. Still better than the hostel right now. Go to sleep. Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever on Faraday. Spinning, spinning. Tell me, am I dreaming? Spinning on empty, spinning in eternity. Am I dreaming? No. Your spinning tapes at the discotheque. The great unceasing disco of the mind. The flash. The bang. The endless learning experience. I guess we're spinning in eternity then. On and on it goes. For untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. Behold. There are millions of them down there. The first time, the last time, the smoke in her mouth, the plotted flowers, the faces turning, changing. What is it? It's the world, Harry boy, and you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. The colors, the voices, the rain, the snow. I don't want to. It's beautiful. Endless visions. Erase them. I guess I can't erase the visions. The colors, the voices? All stuck on loop. Whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister. A ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsakes. Hey, you never know. They might come in handy. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. That's right, I am an agent of the world. But what if I want to be the agent of nothing? I am an agent of the world, I guess. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? I have no idea. For the greater good. For the greater good, so empathy says. Solving your little crossword puzzles. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. We're making progress. Measured, steady progress. Forget politics. I'll never sleep if I keep like this. We're making progress. Slow and steady. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, our Harry. He still doesn't see that it's the world changing around him. What? How is that political? 
He's got no idea what he's in for. Why? Cause only love can break your heart. Feel the pillow under your cheek. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. Sounds like me last night, to be honest. You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Go. Do it for the wind. Do it for the picture puzzle. <laughs> Put it all together. Solve the world. One conversation at a time. That's what we're doing here. Open our, your eyes. How you feeling, Harry? You good? What's this? Good. You're up. Listen, there's something that's been bothering you for a few days now. What is it? It's a suspicion, or a feeling, really, that things are not quite in hand around here. Tell me about it. An earth-shattering deduction from your psyche. What will those guys come up with next? Every day, things seem to spin more and more wildly out of control. The center isn't holding. And despite your efforts to moderate and contain these energies, things only seem to be getting worse. Wait, I thought things were going pretty well. Let's get right to it. What needs to be done? Not my problem. I thought things were going pretty well. Oh, sure. You've been making progress on your case, interviewing people, solving side tasks. But who's focusing on the big questions? I assume the most qualified and highly credentialed people uh, were taking care of that stuff. This really doesn't sound like my job. Um, what am I supposed to do? Wait, I'm assuming highly credentialed people are doing it? But... Have you ever seen them? How do you know they're even there? More importantly, how do you know they aren't waiting for your participation? What am I supposed to do? You've got to find out who bears la responsabilité. What exactly is la responsabilité? The most awesome, terrible thing. It is human nature to crave la responsabilité and to deny it. That's why it must be distributed across many different organizations, agencies, offices, and portfolios. I thought I was assigning responsibility for the murder. Harry, Harry, you're thinking about this too narrowly. La Responsabilité isn't concerned with trivial questions like who killed who. It's about the real issues, the Human Welfare Index, the price of staple goods, the transition to real democracy. I can't refuse this, can I? All right, give it to me. I'll accept the responsibility. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't some kind of dictatorship. You can't simply seize la responsabilité for yourself. It must be given by a legitimate authority. Legitimate, you say? Like a committee. Do we really have time for this? And who should sit on this committee? Sounds like too much responsibility for me, I don't want it. Do we, do we really have time for this? There is always time to follow best practices. Once someone's decided to cut corners for the sake of expediency, who knows what else they're capable of? Swift, decisive action. Mass executions. Yeah, how about no? Fun stuff. That's what they're capable of. And who should sit on this committee? Only the most even-keeled minds in Martinez. Your half-brother, the lieutenant, is a natural place to start. Together, you'll be able to discover who has la responsabilité in Rivershaw. And, if necessary, you'll have the wisdom and expertise to assign it among yourselves. What happens when, once we've assigned responsibility? Most likely, your findings will be collected in a report, which will be carefully reviewed by your superiors. Okay. Once they've reviewed it, those same superiors will produce a set of recommendations to be taken up at the next meeting of the Standing Committee. Rest assured, no matter what happens, it will be done through the proper channels. 
I'm prepared to take on this awesome burden. You know what? This sounds like a drag. I don't know if I really want responsibility for whatever you guys are putting myself into, but I'm curious where this thought goes, so let's accept the task. Good luck. Your report is eagerly anticipated. What is this? Take on the responsibility. There is, uh, things down here are a mess. Someone has to do something about it. You and some other moralists should probably form a committee to decide whose job it is. Form a committee of fellow moralists to assign responsibility. Kim might know where to start. I don't really care. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Good morning, Kim. Can I talk to you about something? Yes. Uh, I found out what the pail is while you were gone. Wonderful. What is your takeaway? He does not seem surprised. Wait, you're not surprised? I think it's terrifying. It seems unreal. I'm super cool with all of it. Where are we, Lieutenant Kitsuragi? It seems unreal. It all seems unreal, detective. In actuality, the pale is no more unreal than, say, water or death. Or that we are stuck behind our eyes, between our own ears, talking. He looks... He looks around, pensive, suddenly. Excuse me. Large topics are not my forte. You seem stable enough. Keep it that way. Now, was there anything else, or should we get to it? Uh, nothing. Okay. Um, I think we were supposed to talk to some kids? If I remember correctly. Hey kids, you got something for me? The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Kids, anything strange happened lately? Um, we had bad words and said, um, I got in trouble. The boy turns a rock over in his hand. Bad words. Bad, bad words. The other says, nodding absent mildly. Bad words? Don't say bad words. Bad words are bad. Don't say them. It's a first step to a life of crime. Okay, what happened? <laughs> Don't say bad words. We won't. He adjusts his cap in the cool air. We learned. Let's move on. Uh, where did you hear the bad words? Was it from someone on the coast? On the radio? We just heard funny voices. The boy shrugs. His jacket whispers as his shoulders move. We thought the voices were funny. We said what they said, and then we got in trouble. The brother nods. Where did you hear them? Did you overhear someone say them? Was it on the radio? Radio? What's that? We just heard them in our head. Guess they don't have a radio around here. Uh, the boy sniffs up a drip of snot. <laughs> what do you mean you heard them in your head? You know, I heard people talking, except just in my head. He points at his head. His fingers are red from the cold. Okay, what did you hear? Uh, it was like, It is time at last! My nasty speed reeks! A brother man is about to grow up. He scratches his head, looks up at his twin, who nods, and then begins. Good memory, kids. Turn up the volume. Blow those speakers out. Now here's... No. Don't say bad words, stupid. The brother cuts in suddenly and sharply. <clears throat> A word when you're done. The lieutenant clears his throat. His eyes are wider than usual. The boy draws a jagged rock across the ground. It leaves a white scratch. All right. Thanks, kids. What's up? What's up, Kim? Detective, about what the twins had to say. I believe they heard something. And given the poverty of this part of town, I don't know how they could have heard the radio. I don't know how they heard it, but I know the station they imitated. So they must have heard it somehow. He returns his gaze to you. What channel was it? Speed Freaks FM. Speed Freaks FM, huh? Yeah, local station, known for its kinetic music and aggressive style. Sounds like a good time. Sounds a bit rough for me. I think I like tenderness in my radio. Uh, sounds like a station for idiots. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, 
Anyway. Yeah. What was that voice, Kim? <laughs> what was that voice? Uh, the lieutenant checks his watch. Weird as it is, the situation is not connected to the murder. This isn't our business. Uh, the situation is not connected to the murder? It's a mystery, though. Mysteries are a business. But it is related, Kim. The wind told me so. Yeah, the wind tells me everything. The lieutenant says nothing. An ocean breeze blows in strong. He raises his jacket collar against it. Besides, maybe it was just a radio they overheard. They might not be old enough to know the difference. How would they have heard the voices? Even if, if it was a radio, where was it coming from? Didn't Ruby have advanced radio know-how? Uh, maybe it has something to do with the mass call-in radio game. Well, even if it was a radio, where was it coming from? The lieutenant shrugs. Let's at least rule out radios before continuing. Maybe the twins didn't know it was a radio they were hearing. The washerwoman seems to know everything that happens here. Let's ask if she heard anything before moving on. Okay. After you. The lieutenant gestures towards the old woman. Alright. Washerwoman, what can you help me with? Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Have you heard a radio on the coast in the last week or so? A radio? Ah, oh, no. We play no radio here. There's one in the shack, but it's never used. Uh, are you sure you didn't hear any radio playing? These ears know every sound that belongs to this coast. I would know if I heard anything different. Any idea how the twins could have heard Speed Freaks FM? Was that the nonsense we were spouting? Pah! She shakes her head. No, I have no idea where they heard it. They've been in earshot all week, and no radio. We good, Kim? Let's just get it out of the way as fast as we can. Contact dispatch from my kinema, and ask them to connect you to the station. Maybe they can shed some light on this. All right, thank you, Kim. I'm ready when you are. Thank you, ma'am. Anything else? No, that's it, ma'am. Thank you very much. You have been very helpful. All right, watch an ace. Man, the fast travel is very convenient. Wait. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Pick up the radio, and then we'll talk to these two. This is Precinct Fifty-Seven. How may I assist you? Alice, I need you to connect me to Speed Freaks FM. Come again, officer. Speed Freaks FM, a radio station, is for the case. Okay, officer. One moment. I have the GMS on the line. I'll connect you now. Yo! The word shoots out of the man's mouth like a bullet. I'm sorry to bother you, I just have a question. Hello, is this uh, DJ Mesh? Uh, sorry to bother you, I just have a question. Ain't no bother, brother. Anyway, I only got a few minutes before I gotta go back on air. What do you need? I'm just calling to confirm, did you debut a new track from DJ Falcio a few days ago? An asshole is a mouth for shit, mm, and I'm puking. Uh, what? An asshole is a mouth for shit, parentheses, and I'm <laughs> puking. Close parentheses. He says more slowly, okay, but what is the song called? Yeah, that is the song. An asshole is a mouth for shit. And I'm puking. Interesting name. Okay. Uh, okay, let's move on. We talked to some kids who said they heard it in their heads. Uh, do you know how that could be possible? Uh, is that what this is about? Listen, it's not our problem if kids decide to tune into R -R 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 River Shore's hottest station. He sighs. It's not about what they played on the radio. They heard it in their heads. Do you know how that's possible? I don't understand. Are you asking if we can, like, um, play our station into people's brains? Sure, forced radio, can't tune out, you'd make a killing on ads. Yeah, like a new way to equalize people, getting them all on the same station, a great tool for communist- What the heck is with these communism stuff? <laughs> Political stuff. Exactly like that, because I think you're an enemy of traditional values forcing your field on the innocent. No. Yeah, like that. Maybe it was part of your civic duty, you were just testing out for the government. No. Uh, Force Radio, sure. Speed Freaks FM is elective listening, man. We don't want to force the people to adopt our thinking. That's fascist <laughs> bullshit. 
No, I was just asking and dreaming up a bold new money-making scheme. Ah, uh, no, that wasn't my fascist line. That was my ultra-liberal one. I can do a fascist one if you want. Uh, I can do a fascist one if you want. You're a fucking wild man. Sure, let's hear it. Okay, the fascist thing was me calling you an enemy of the state for force-pumping filth into children, thus corrupting traditional values. <laughs> oh man, I love it! You're great! No, no, we didn't do anything like that. We know how to. We just played it on air like normal people. The radio host doesn't try to contain his laughter. This guy's good. <laughs> I like him. Now, was there anything else you wanted to ask? No, that was it. Thank you for your time. Nah, man. Thank you. This has been an absolute pleasure. Later, cop man. Later. The party has terminated the call. Is there anything else I can do for you, officer? Uh, press the button labeled Save and turn on Speed Freaks FM. It requires no adjustment. The radio is already set to Speed Freaks FM. Smoke to the wildest cop and rabbit show! After a moment of fiddling with the radio, you push the glowing saved button and comes on a familiar voice. Didn't even get his name, but whoever that mystery cop was, we salute him. Salute. Right away, the lieutenant reaches into the cabin and turns off the radio. <laughs> He's not looking at you as he says. Someone must have been messing with the radio or maybe picked up a random frequency. You wanted the prime line, right? That's DJ Mesh. That was Speed Freaks FM. Sorry about it. I just wanted to contact this batch. Uh, that's DJ Mesh. That was Speed Freaks. The lieutenant is resolutely silent, staring at the console. Dude, I think we. I think I just exposed him. Ah <laughs> oh, man, you should have told me you liked them. I could have asked for. Uh, I could have asked for a shout out. Right. No problem. I want to get you. I don't. Right. You don't want to get into this. No problem. I should have asked you for a shout out. I don't listen to them. <laughs> I think you're denying. It's okay to like what you like, Kim. The lieutenant says sharply. I don't like it. I don't know how that channel got marked. And he shrugs very slightly. Just leave it alone. He clearly doesn't want to share this with you. Right, you don't want to get into this, no problem. Nothing to get into, really. But sure, uh, let's focus on the important thing. He passed the motor carriage. This is Precinct 57. Can I connect you to someone? Uh, no, we're done, thank you. 57 over and out. In the cabin, <laughs> you see. Ah, uh, Kim. I was just making fun of you. What now? Okay, about that call. Yes. Let's start from the top. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt the twins heard Speed Freaks FM. I still don't know how without a radio, but they did. Spooky shit, but what does it mean? Squint and thought. We're not any closer to knowing how they heard it, though, are we? Spooky shit. I don't know what it means. The lieutenant's gaze travels uh, toward the coast, toward the fishing village so far away. I mean, a weird voice in my head said to talk to the kids. Maybe it's related. Maybe. I don't think the voices in your head are related to this, no. Okay, but it didn't sound like one of my thoughts. It sounds like a lady. Probably not. Sorry, Kim. It's, yeah, it sounds like a lady. The lieutenant gives you a long look. I don't know what to say to that or what you want me to say. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, yeah. Sorry for bringing it up. Did we ask where the kids were when they heard the voice? I don't think we did. Uh, the wind picks up, blowing a stray strand of the lieutenant's hair out of place. He smooths it back. I didn't, sorry. No need to apologize. I was just going to say it'd be a good idea to ask them. Right, let's go do that. And, detective, thanks for this. It's been interesting. He smiles to you. Wait, he turns to you. He smiles. <laughs> that was interesting. I guess he... Well, he, he wasn't the one who made the call, but he got to hear the DJ. That's interesting. Okay, who are you two punks? What are you doing with this car? That's one brutal motor carriage. Says the uh, young man with the piss effort uh, written on his back. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan, Fuck the world. <laughs> a snazzy shit-ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops heads. Scary tribal shit. You do know this is a cop car, right? Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. Okay, he knows. 
While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, Copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... He turns to his companion. Uh, who are you? We don't have time for this, let's go. Who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches. Or skulls. Well, I didn't ask you about snitching on anyone. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is... We're not part of the skulls yet. Okay. Okay then. Let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Who are the skulls? You don't know? What kind of cop are you? The amnesia kind. What are you talking about? It's not a question. Don't get into it. Uh, of course I do. I'm just testing you boys. The skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertnay. His voice rings with an excitement. Besmertai, or the Besmati, the Immortals, are West River Sholian crime syndicates. Uh, and you want to be part of that? The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Jacking carriages and getting into high speed chases. So you're just uh, car junkies. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck all swagger, infamous for their non verbal modus operandi. Say nothing. They usually occupy the burnt out quarter in Jamrock. Or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom lighted vehicles. Ah, uh, I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. Uh, they won't know anything about the murder. Do you know Cindy the skull? Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. She's part of that? The young man's eyes glaze over, his voice filled with longing. Yeah, a true artist of the future. Just like Arno Van Eyck. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. He adds, returning from whatever void he was just visiting. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. Huh. Uh, let's see. I see you kids... I see you kids are into idonic dance music. Oh man, yeah! We're not fucking kids, man! <laughs> he claims and stops himself, processing the rest of your question. Be wary of the abyss. His blonde friend adds ominously and points to his temple. Why? It's a threat. An impotent threat of violence. The lieutenant answers for the two rebels. A threat? Good, I like those. Don't fuck with me, boys. I'm one of the bad cops. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about the music, and now we're and now there is a conflict all of a sudden. It's too much. Nervously shake your head. Don't fuck me, boys. I'm the one of the bad cops. Whoa! Come on, man. We're just talking here. Just words. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. Well, buzz off. He raises his open palms. Yeah. No need to throw your authority in our faces. You want to talk? Let's talk, boys. Ask them. <laughs> His eyes meet yours. Uh, why aren't there more skulls in Martinez? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Good, they're doing some kind of job. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. That wasn't a challenge, dude. Yeah, we are. Okay, enough. Mm-hmm. Uh... What's with the jackets? What is with the jackets? What about them? Actually, forget it. Mm hmm. Okay, well, that was a lovely waste of time. Uh, I guess we gotta talk to the kids again. Let's go. Let's get to it. I don't even know what those guys were for, but oh well. None of our concern. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Real quick, boys. Where were you when you heard the voices? There. The boy points towards one of the ruined monoliths nearby. We were there. The other child nods. The failed 
building looms overhead. Ha! I knew it! Thanks, kids. And so I return to the field. One says throwing a rock into the sand. Full circle. Back to Feld, then. When you're ready. The lieutenant smiles to himself. All the right. boy turns the rock over in his hands. He looks to you, then his brother, then back to you. Bye, kids. All right, back to the Feld building we go. Okay. Oh, what's this? Relax, it's not yours. She didn't crash every MC in Revishol, hopefully. <laughs> uh, maybe. Maybe not. But hey, we're back here, the and so are these guys, I guess. Alright. The once bright mural towers above you, saying, Feld Electrical, R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Let's see, Encyclopedia. Do I have any equipment that would increase Encyclopedia? Let's see here. Visual Calculus. Da -da. Not a whole lot of logic. Well, there's like logic, but Encyclopedia. Oh, here's one. That's it. I think that's it. The nerd glasses? This is minus one encyclopedia. We don't want that. Okay. Let's the get once a shot bright now. mural towers above you, saying, Feld Electrical R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Okay, for some reason this is clipping downwards, but let's give it a shot. 72%. You know nice. a lot about radio. Enough to know you have no idea how. Or why those boys heard Speed Freaks FM in their heads. Knowledge like that isn't just obscure, it's unknowable. Dangerous theoretical facts like that are probably protected under the Coalition Government's Articles of Dominion, Title 14, Article 7C. While an expert might be able to suss it out on their own, a layman like you has no hope. Gotcha. You don't know how it happened, but the stores of your knowledge are vast, and there is something crucial in them. What's that? You know where Ruby isn't. Where isn't she? She isn't in the fishing village. She's not with her bullet under the floorboards in the shack. So where could she be? Well, there was no way into the apartment about abandoned apartment buildings below us. Um, she wasn't at the church. She might be underneath where the sewers are. The alcoholics never mentioned seeing Ruby either. Idiot Doom Spiral gave an exhaustive account of recent events, but never mentioned seeing Ruby. Right. You've even entered the church, met Tiago and Sona. Some criminals seek sanctuary from sacred buildings, though the sanctuary laws were abolished decades ago. But Ruby wasn't such a one. Okay. And you do know one thing about radios, Yulan. Ruby dabbles in advanced radio theories. Yulan, the speed freak's mystery. It might just be related. Does that mean she's here? If she's here on the coast, she'll be here. And besides, Something weird happened to the twins around here. It'd be nice to know what caused that. Another fact for your collection. Suddenly, there's a sigh, carried on the molecules around you. Moving, flowing, from high pressure to low pressure. Like that of a woman, emptying her lungs. She wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you, in her breath, flowing through it. Was that just static just now? I think I heard static. Where does it go? In through the collapsed roof, flowing down a concrete staircase to the basement, sweeping away footprints in the dust on the stairs, and then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels, a whisper away. Wait. Collapsed roof, uh, concrete stairs, sweeping footprints beach below the boardwalk wait the 
We could have gone through the boardwalk. She's down there. Who are you, ship? That's the second time we heard that voice. I think she's down there, below this building. Okay. Why? The twins did hear the radio from here, so something is happening. The wind told me. We've looked everywhere else. Ever since I woke up, maybe even before, I've been getting these strange cold spells. Uh, we've looked everywhere else. Right. How do we get in there? The doors were on the collapsed side of this building. They're gone, basically. Finally, my time to shine. There's a ladder next to the sign. Perhaps we can climb it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe the ladder. Right, there's a ladder there. Perhaps you can climb them. We are not climbing anything. <laughs> I'm 43 years old, and I plan to live to see 70. Well, you look pretty fit for 43. What's wh What are you scared of? There has to be a way to use brute force. Climbing sounds unsafe. Brute force is safe. Look around and find something to break if the ladder fails. Uh... I don't think my physical instrumentation is going to be very useful right now, so... Let's see. A rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Some of the rungs are missing. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. Assess the situation. The distances between the remaining rungs are rather wide. You'd have to use the mounting brackets. However, they seem corroded and the peeling rust is razor sharp. Right. In addition, the first rung is going to be tough to reach. It's what? Three meters above the ground? And you're 180? What do you mean three meters? It's like right above my head. 180 seems about right though. Not to mention that the roof is collapsing and the wind gets pretty brutal up there. Dismounting from the ladder is going to be hard. Perhaps if you were to not climb the ladder <laughs> instead. Yeah. What if you were to reconceptualize climbing the ladder? Tell me. Yeah, because falling from that height seems, well, splat. So don't do that. Just, you know. What if I don't climb? What if I just, what if I just teleport? Teleportation is not a thing. The lieutenant stares at you, stone face. Come on, Kim, where's your adventurous spirit? Teleportation is a thing, just need a bit of concentration. It won't hurt you try. It is a thing, though. Okay, let's say teleportation is a thing. Wouldn't you need some kind of scientific apparatus to create a teleportation field? You can't just do it without apparatus. No, we don't. We, we, we use mana. The mana inside. What are they talking about? The kid behind you whispers, asking his father. Teleportation, Mikhail. It's generally thought impossible. It won't hurt to try. Oh yes, it could hurt. A lot. Savo Fair, Santiago Climbing. Why does that give us plus two? Okay, let me see if I can increase my Savo Fair then. Uh, we don't have any Savo Fair right now. What will give us some Savo Fair? Savo Fair? Savo Fair? Savo Fair? Savo Fair? Not this one. Any Savo Fair here? Oh, glasses. There we go. Not these pants. Uh, reaction speed. Do I have anything here that's dragging my Savo Fair down? It doesn't look like it. Alrighty then, let's go. The rusty ladder leads. Seventy-two percent. Let's go. All nice. you need to do is close your eyes and concentrate. Darkness enfolds you. You can feel the distance between the bench and the first rung of the ladder. All you need to is... Do it! Zoot! Zap! Pow! Crinkle! <laughs> it's like magic. You feel yourself disappear. Your atoms fading out of existence. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I know, right? Bam! <laughs> You find yourself on the roof, having mastered the art of physical displacement. I did it, Kim. I teleported. Don't glow, just stand there like a Samaritan master. I did it, Kim. I teleported. I just saw you climb the ladder. <laughs> you just climbed it, like a regular person. The lieutenant shouts from below. The wind at the top of the building starts howling loudly, blowing away the lieutenant's voice. Faintly, you hear... Never mind. 
Find a way to let me in when you get inside. Ah, <sighs> don't go adventuring with a backup, especially if we think the suspect may be hiding here. Yeah, she might be here, right? She's probably here. The central support beam has been destroyed by artillery fire. Oh, there it is. Anything else here? Nope, just, uh, just that. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Stone Falls is a long way down. Yep. Getting a little dark here. The glass is covered with grime and dust. You can barely see out. Let's go. Let's go. You should take out your flashlight. Understood. Don't you think that's gonna alert the... Alert Ruby, though? This collapse nearly sealed the basement. One can barely squeeze by. Antiquated office furniture, last century maybe? Oh, there's Kim. This overturned table is covered with orange mildew, crawling with something. Alright, Kim, let's set you in. Two rusty metal plates that slide apart form a crude door. It's been here under the boardwalk for a while. Who's there? What do you mean, who's there? It's me, Kim. Stop playing around and help me get your door open. Okay, push doors. The doors seem to be on rails, but they've gotten jammed. You grab a side and put some strength into prying it open. With the help of your partner, the two metal panels slide open with a creak. Huh. I hope no one dangerous heard that. Yeah, she probably did. How did you even get there? After you climbed up to the roof, you mean? There's a maintenance entrance under the boardwalk. It's next to a drain pipe, mm. possibly a storm drain. It was easy to miss before. Could have saved me the effort. Maintenance entrance, so pedestrian. At least we know a quick way out. Eh, yeah, could have saved me the effort. At least now we have an exit, so let's get going. It's time to investigate these passages. Sure, let's go. Uh, what do we have here? Old file folders in the cart, documents silver with mold. Thick series of dusty pa uh, panes of glass. What's this? Suggestion. What's my code? Empathy, hind eye coordination. Yeah, it's a fairly snazzy suit. I like it. I like that a bit. Uh, logic. I wonder if I have any other hats that. Reaction speed, logic, drama. Drama. I wonder if anything else has, like, suggestion or something. Let's see. Drama, visual calculus. Nope, nope. Conceptualization, logic. Drama, logic, drama, more drama. Logic, encyclopedia, logic, logic. Rhetoric. Well, I guess since I'm going to be talking to Ruby, that might be useful. I hope. At least it goes better with our suit, I think. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. <clears throat> What's here? In the beam of the flashlight, a crevice in the in the wall. Oh, nice. Stale fabric smell and dust. No one slept here in months, maybe years. What's this? Hey, it's a commie hat! <laughs> Mazovian socioeconomics, why would I need that? Revolutionary propaganda on the bunk bed, ancient flowers and brochures. You can see the beach through this slit window. These pots and plates are full of dust and spiderwebs. Oh, is this me? A mustachioed and mutton-chopped man, amateurishly depicted, gazes at you with sad eyes. A plaque reads, 
K. Mazov. There is a spider web in the lower left corner of the portrait. Okay, that's not me. Brush off, uh, brush off the portrait. Years worth of dust is shaken off. The full head of hair matched by an ample moustache and sideburns look a bit silly. Really? I think it looks okay. Someone crouches, heels digging into wet sand. Hands sweep across the sand. Grains stick into the frayed skin of the fingertips. An old man sits on a slab of concrete and taps his fingers against the glass of a scope. You shudder. Slab of concrete? Fingers against a glass of a scope? What? Sand, grains, okay. Is that Mazov guy? This must have been the hiding place of some naive leftist. Some radical or radicals were hiding out here. They left a long time ago. A long time ago? How long? Half a century. This was probably part of the network of defense posts the communards built against the amphibious landing. He looks around. I think the purpose of this bunker was to produce propaganda. It would have had radio equipment by then, but that's all been noted. What's it still doing here? What most people think of as history has a tendency to linger in random neighborhoods. Martinez being what it is, no one has gone through the trouble of cleaning out the old bunkers. Good hiding place for someone who's up to no good. Maybe I should move in here, it seems cozy. I won't stand in your way, but only after we're through with this case. Could someone have stopped through here recently? You mean like Ruby? No, I think we've stumbled on a piece of history. He looks at the dust. Okay, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Alright, let's get out. Oh, we got footprints. Boot prints in the sand. One of the souls appears more worn than other. That's her, all right. Oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? There's something in the air. An unnatural buzzing. A collapsed tunnel. You have to find another way around. Okay. <clears throat> He's definitely here, though. It's getting louder, the buzzing sound. Buzzing. There it is again, like a swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp. A strange tingling you can almost smell. Lieutenant, do you feel something? No. What do you mean? A pain, a strange tingling, a ghost, nothing. It's just my mind playing tricks. A uh, strange tingling. I don't feel it, but we should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. Uh, hold on, you really don't feel anything? No, but you are the sensitive one. I see. It's not a quib. The situation is dangerous. I saw them too. Footprints with a right sole, uh, worn smooth. Looks like our suspect. If she's in here, we need to plan our next step carefully. What do you mean? Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control over. It will upset the balance of power in Martinez. The deadlock between the company and the Union will destabilize. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. If Art knows more than he's told us, maybe we should continue working for him. You're right. However corrupt he may be, nothing happens in Martinez without him knowing. We might have to dirty our hands, but... In this case, we can't afford to be squeaky clean. Do you think whatever happens will affect our cryptozoologist? I don't think it matters there. Uh, how bad do you think things could get? Well, we are not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. He smiles in the dark. If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. I mean, I guess. What do you think is waiting for us there? I think I see a cavern. Maybe more cellars? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. Not with this flashlight, we I don't. Be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. Yeah, true. Or maybe not. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. I see. He puts his hand to his holster. Alright. Concrete pipe buried in the sand and dust. Uh, stuff here. Cash money. Cash money. Can we zoom out? 
I see someone. There's someone up here. And a something. Can we do anything about so, it? Nope! Your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the static, you hear a woman's voice. That's Ruby, all right. That's Ruby. Ah, jeez. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once. But her words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable Crap. right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Says the shadowy figure by the machine. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. Here we are. As she says the word, officer, you feel a spike in the agony. It sounds like the entire radio frequency range is screaming directly into your neural pathways. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh... Don't move too much or fight it. I guess I won't then. Uh, don't cover. That's an awful decision. Mm. Why would you not want to shield yourself from it? It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Well, I guess it didn't make much of a difference, huh? Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. You're under arrest? What's happening to me? Are you gonna kill me too? You're under arrest. Really now? Check this out. She turns the dial in her hand. Ow, ow, okay, okay, okay. Heal, heal, heal. You're overwhelmed with a new surge of violent static. It feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. What's happening to me? I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. Pale stuff again. The explosion of static you're hearing. It's the ULAN frequency. Blasted from that pale emitter that Angus mentioned. I saw your equations as a U-line frequency. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? I expected as much. I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. What is this? A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pale, literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. So. What we are experiencing is a, a concentration of radio waves. He gestures towards something with great effort. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. Yeah, literally. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. Just like the kids. This must be how the twins heard the radio in their heads. They must have been standing by when she tested it. That was dangerous, kids. She likes telling you about the machine. Keep her talking. Look for an opportunity to break loose. Uh, how did you get your hands on this thing? I built it myself. She now so was her torture device. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Way beyond. She studies her death ray and the law officials trapped in it. Will I stay like this forever? Have you experienced the compressor yourself? Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. Uh, will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. She hesitates. <laughs> Six 
I appreciate the nice music, but at the same time, the static is a little bit too much. Uh, there's great and all, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. Okay. So she thinks of you as hunters, not cops, and of herself merely as prey. Please, could you just turn it down so I can ask you something? If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. You're looking for a deal with my mattress. Speed freaks! What an interesting sequence we're in right now. The lieutenant clutches his head, grimacing. God damn it. She regards you and Kim with sudden sympathy. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. Ah, oh, crap. At least we have armor, but Kim doesn't. She steps reluctantly out of the shadows. The pain lessens. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader. Not like the murder weapon. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Uh, how did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. By hiding bullets under floorboards? So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Uh, why hide the bullet, though? This could have turned out pretty bad for me if you hadn't walked right into 25 bands of ultra-high frequencies. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. Did you shoot Lely? No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching, though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. You're right, Classy was the first to share her suspicions. It was your girlfriend, she cracked. Uh, I think it was... I don't think she cracked, but... Yeah, suspicions. Oh. I knew the kitten had claws, but not like this. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Uh... Let's see... Titus told me it took some convincing. You... Your own boys told us you were on the coast, Titus. Oh, fuck. Took some convincing my ass. And those guys liked me, I know it. But this is what happens to people whom people like. A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck did the rest of you get by? Wait. Wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal. I opened them up. I do it by asking questions. I have some for you. Honestly, I don't know how I do it. Can you please stop here? Uh, I do it by asking questions. Wasn't you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal. I opened them up. I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. <laughs> Fuck them all the same. I do it by asking questions, though. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. She adjusts the grip on her gun. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. Uh, do you have an alibi for when Lely was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. 
I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. Uh, they were... There were ten minutes they couldn't account for. You mean the length of a toilet break? That wouldn't even have been enough time. Our investigation... Has shown that 15 minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Hold on, no one takes a 15 minute leak. 15 minutes was enough. Wow, now I'm curious. Please, explain. Look, there's a secret way from the first floor to the whirling to the, uh, to the roof. Don't know it, but also... She frowns, studying your face. The shot couldn't have come from the roof. Or we would have all heard it downstairs. Huh, didn't think about that. She has a warrant there. No one mentioned. The pain stops him from finishing the sentence. That didn't go super well. You've got to lay something better on her. Uh... You have a gun, but she didn't kill him? I believe that. Uh, let's see... Would you say Lely was a likable person? I guess we'll just go through the list. I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. Okay, well, I have other questions then. I'm listening. You have a gun. And? Uh, let's see, where'd you get it? It's a front loader. Can't quite tell what kind of gun it is. Old rifles? Do you collect old rifles? No, they're not practical. Break too often. Mm. Okay. There's other, uh, other evidence I want to ask? Yeah. Evidence. Do you like to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Claudia's rooftop. Sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. Is that the only reason you hung out on the roof? The view's pretty bomb, too. But you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah. Along with Claudia. What's so great about her antenna? It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. So, you're sure you didn't shoot the Merc from the roof? Yes, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, the shot had to have come from afar. Uh, I guess none of this is... None of this is useful, so... Did you leave any flowers for Klaus and the roof? No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. Okay, so you didn't leave any Maybells. No, I did not. Uh, drugs. So... Heart of Gold Tommy fucked me over too. No, I don't trust a musician. No, he didn't. I found my way in. Okay, great. You got into my lorry on your own. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? Uh, you had a financial incentive to kill the Merc. Man, it's to get away from all that murderous shit that I left Jamrock, my previous employer, for the union. <laughs> The lieutenant is unable to articulate his question. She deliberately avoided naming the mob she worked for. You might be able to find this out later. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. She turns the knob down just a millimeter. Then, it's going to be easier to reach the machine now. Uh, but you're threading us with it. Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious scum. She responds, holding your gaze. There's a sinister note in her voice. Even with the gun and the compressor, oh. she's afraid of you. Okay, let's take a step back. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. Uh, let's see. Who killed the Merc if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him, and there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes, her tired voice. She's been staying up late, listening in on the conversations crisscrossing Martinez. Police radio? You've been 
following the case. Who hasn't? You know I can still see him there, in Claus's room, lying on his side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. If he didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. What do you mean, La Puta Madre agent? Yes. You. Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. She looks at you quizzically. Ah, crap. Through the sudden sharp pain in your head, you hear the lieutenant mumble something to himself. Fucking hell. And why me? You hear through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Who's everyone? How do you know this? Everyone in Jamrock. The cops, the criminals. Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name too. Tell me, if you, if you, uh, tell me what's my name. If you know about, if you know that about me, you must know my name. Fuck yeah, I'm a Lapucha Madre agent, you better let me go. Uh, La Puta Maje. I've heard of La Puta Maje. He's dangerous, right? What's my name? Harry Dubois. One corrupt motherfucker with the disco pants and a funny tie. Agent to La Puta Madre. She quickly replies, okay. So she knows your name. That doesn't mean you're on the tape. Criminals make up bogeyman stories about cops all the time. All of this just means that you're effective. Criminals know you and are scared of you. I don't know. Sounds pretty convincing to me. I've heard. Uh, he's dangerous, right? Is that a joke or a threat? I'm guessing both. No, that was a real question. I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm, uh, I know I'm supposed to know about all this, but I lost my memory recently. Yes, of course. Are you scared yet? No, that was a real question. Yeah, sure. She doesn't believe you. I'm sure La Buddha Madre himself will explain it all to you soon enough. What did you do to this, uh, La Puja Maje? You've been to my lorry. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? And now I have Harry Can Opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. She's not going to change her mind that easily. She still perceives you as a threat. Wait, one thing. Possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you, singular, or plural? She might know something. Uh... What happened Sunday night? Tell me your version. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. It's okay. We just want to... Uh, uh. He struggles to finish the sentence. Alright, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Klasia comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Wait, did she also seem high to you? Oh yeah, super. But I didn't think too much of it at first. I'd seen her party hard before. Classe said you knew something was wrong immediately. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her. But... No such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like he'd been hanged. How did you manage to come up with a plan so quickly? It's pretty weird that you came up uh, with this plan right on the spot. How did you manage to come up with a plan so quickly? What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. What? She looks shaken. She wasn't surprised to be ratted out, but framed. Wait, so it wasn't... it was classy all along? Her idea? Yeah, in cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the Hardy Boys. 
Shower head, resourceful. That's bad. That should be so calm. I don't believe you. Sh uh, resourceful. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you think she killed Lily herself? As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if this is true, weren't you worried this lynching might lead to... The lieutenant forces himself to finish the sentence. You sound normal, <laughs> him. War? The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... She doesn't want to talk about this, but not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. Eh, yeah, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. Uh, when I came into town, was there anyone with me? Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to them, anyway? I don't know what happened to them. Who wasn't this death squad? I don't know what happened to them. Sure you do. I bet they're just outside, waiting. I guess I'll take my chances. Who wasn't this death squad? Well, it wasn't this scrawny dude. You had two guys and a lady. The guys looked pretty buff. Lady wasn't bad either. Uh, what else can you tell me? One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding something or other about him. And the woman, the woman was the only one in uniform. All were carrying. That sound about right? Uh, not that I know of. She narrows her eyes. No idea who these people are, literally. Yeah, that's right. I was just testing you. They're right outside with guns. No, that doesn't ring any bells. Well, this has been a great talk, really. But I think I'm going to hit the road now. Okay, let's destroy the machine. While we have the chance. All right, Harry, you can do it. I know. The 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 thing. <laughs> we got a green roll. Did it. The compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... You're under arrest. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, what, what? Um, this is not where I thought I was gonna go. Uh, what are you doing? Problem solving. She mutters. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are... Oh, yes, it is. 83%? Don't fail me now, please. She's truly oh, thank desperate. You. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. What options? You know. Maybe I can still talk her out of it. This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. Please, put your hands up. Just walk away. I wish I could let you go, but I have to follow protocol. Please. Uh, put your hands up, just walk away. I wish I could let you go, but I have to follow protocol. Uh, I have to follow protocol. She pulls the trigger before you finish your sentence. I should just let her go. You watch as her brains trickle out through her neon hair. Oh, she, I f she killed herself. I failed to talk her down. Lieutenant Yefreitor Dubois, control your emotions. We did our job. This won't be the worst thing that happens on this case, believe me. You can't let this break you. There is no coming back from this one. It will stay with you in nightmares. <sighs> Okay, what do we do now? We clean up. It may take days for processing to pick up her body. We need to move it somewhere. He looks around. That tent there. Oh. Can I grab this? Gun get. It's not mine, but I'll take it. Okay. Anything here? Your main. Great. Cooking utensil. She has prepared herself porridge with bananas. 
Interesting. Cash money. Don't need it. Crap. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She was used to camping out. Look inside. You see a rolled up sleeping bag and personal belongings. We should put her in the sleeping bag so the rats don't get to her. Okay, let's carry her over here. The lieutenant nods. There she lies, cocoon in the sleeping bag, surrounded by empty cigarette packs, books, and half-read magazines. Magazines? You should look through them. Shine your flashlight on the books and magazines. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? The lieutenant peeks in over your shoulder, sift through the magazines. Rega Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook? You pocket the worn brown leather journal. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. All right. I want to check the gun first I got, though. Um, let's see. Here's a journal. We got a gun. Got a gun. Equip this when times are most dire. Double barrel pistol. Uh, compact, no nonsense design. More durable than precise. And I only have one bullet. Well, that's not going to help me much. That's not going to help me much. I only got one shot. Alright. Notebook, notebook. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name. Schneller. Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, beloved among architects and engineers. She had good taste and must have taken what she recorded here seriously. Unwind the strap. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently, perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. We could learn a lot from this. Uh, what kinds of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. Sure. Professionalism is his coping mechanism. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. How far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What did she write the day Lily died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th though, well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this, loyal to a fault, except but that's another matter entirely. She is referring to betraying her previous employer. Does this suggest she did it in self-defense? Anything about La Puta Madre? That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. 
Small wonder. Would you talk about Laputa Madre in your journal? You do see an M, though. Laputa Madre? M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Read the entry from the 9th first. Great. M's peon is coming to town, no doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? Read the entry from the 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me, did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. What's the most recent uh, entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads, even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run, not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. I don't think she killed the mercenary. It looks like she might have been framed. The lieutenant taps on the page. Don't get emotional. So she died for nothing. She killed the merc, then turned the gun on herself. Case closed, it's so tidy. Okay, what do you mean, framed? So she died for nothing? She was in plenty of trouble, even without the murder charge. Still, it's a nasty business. Kim, am I really a La Pucha Madre agent? Ah, no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. He looks you straight in the eye for a moment and sighs. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting. Then who do you think killed the Merc? Could have been Titus. Then again... But no one heard the shot. Maybe there's a hardy boy we've yet to meet who acted as his accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. 